Hello guys and welcome or welcome on back to She's Diabetic. For those of you who are new here, hello. My name's Andrea. I've lived with type 1 diabetes for over 20 years and this is just a channel all about my life, my experience with type 1 diabetes. Speaking of that, I have been on both the T-Slim X2 and the Omnipod 5 insulin pump systems. And this is a comparison for you from my perspective. Generally to start off, I think one of the reasons why you see the T-Slim X2 being compared to the Omnipod 5, these two systems share a lot of similarities from sort of a glance perspective. They both are semi-automated insulin delivery systems, which means they have a dynamic insulin delivery aspect to it that is executed via an algorithm that help keep you in range for longer, or that's the goal. They're both running from values that are fed from the Dexcom G6, and they both have a three-day wear time. So there's a lot of similarities here from this kind of overarching perspective and completely understand that. We'll get into the algorithm later of what really sets these two in different spaces from one another. Now, aside from the algorithms being different, the big, 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 big difference between these two pumps is the T-Slim X2 is a tubed pump and the Omnipod 5 is a tubeless pump. The T-Slim X2 is approved for ages 6 plus. The Omnipod 5 is approved for ages 2 plus. The T-Slim X2 is a little bit bigger capacity in that it holds up to 300 units of insulin. The Omnipod 5, 200 units of insulin. And they are both approved for use only with U100 insulin. The T-Slim X2 has five different infusion set types, meaning that you can get a plastic cannula, a steel cannula, different lengths of tubing. There are five different types of that that are compatible with the T-Slim X2. And with the Omnipod 5, as you might expect, it's all built into the pod, so there's no customization that you can do with the kind of cannula or the material of the cannula. What it has is what you get. With regards to the phone compatibility, both of these have some phone compatibility some bolus from phone features, etc. but you gotta have a compatible phone and that varies. There's a big, big uh, issue in the Omnipod 5 ongoing sort of <laughs> crusade in the Omnipod 5 community of when the heck is the iOS app gonna be available? Because currently it's only available on Android. And with regards to the T-Slim, you've gotta have the right updates to utilize it with a phone and you've gotta have a compatible device. I will let you go into all those details. I'm not gonna cover them all here because it's very complicated, but they both have elements of connectivity to a phone, providing you got the right phone, providing you have the right update. So we've taken a look at the physical aspect of these two pumps, which physically, I think that is what sets them apart in the market when the consumer is first looking at the two of them. Okay, it's tubed or it's tubeless. Those are my options or those are the defining factors. And yes, yes, those are two very big, big defining factors. There is no denying that. But when you get inside these systems and what these two algorithms are doing or not doing, that is another huge differentiating factor between these two. Just because these two offer a semi-automated or dynamic basal rate some correction bolus options. Just because these two offer that does not mean they are the same inside at all. And this is where I feel really comfortable and happy making this video because I've had direct interaction with the two algorithms and feel like I can way more understand it having been through it. Before I go into this, I have to say, we as the consumer and the public know a lot more about how the T-Slim X2's control IQ algorithm is executed. We know way more about that than we do about the Omnipod 5. Insulet has released so little information really about how the algorithm works. And you're gonna hear that as I describe how these algorithms execute themselves. The T-Slim X2 system is called Control IQ. And the Omnipod 5 system is called the Smart Adjust system. Both of these pumps can be used in manual mode. You're not forced into using these automated software aspects if you don't want to. But if you're using the algorithm, these are the differences. Both of these systems have a target glucose 
and a prediction time, meaning the target glucose is where the system is aiming for you to be, and the prediction time is how far into the future the system is projecting to see where your blood sugar will be and how it's going to dynamically adjust to get it to that target glucose that it wants you at. The TSLM X2's target glucose is locked in at 112.5. The Omnipod 5, on the other hand, has some variability to this. You actually can adjust that target number throughout the day within your profile. Say you wanna be running a little higher at night, a little lower in the morning. That is more adjustable on the Omnipod 5. And you can set those numbers for 110, 120, 130, 140, or 150. So you have five options, whereas on the TSLM X2, it wants you at 112.5. There's no negotiation on that. Unless you're running different modes like exercise or sleep, which we'll get to. And in terms of that prediction time, the TSLM X2 is predicting 30 minutes into the future. The Omnipod 5 is predicting 60 minutes into the future. But whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you put on these pumps and how does it know what the jumping off point is? How does it know what to give you? Because we're all different. We're all more or less insulin sensitive than one another. How, how does it know? This is a big one. This is a big difference. The TSLM X2 takes your information from your Dexcom G6, what your blood glucose is, and it uses your basal rates, which you preset with your doctor, and it increases and decreases based on what your Dexcom G6 readings are. With the Omnipod 5, the first couple pods, it essentially does the same thing as that, but then I think after the first pod, or maybe it's like the second pod, not sure, it goes rogue. It goes, this is what Andrea has been taking on average per day. And I'm going to parcel that out as I see fit based on the Dexcom G6 readings. Now, you have insulin sensitivity set, as in give me one unit for every 100 points that I'm off to get me back to that target glucose. However, that really doesn't influence the Omnipod 5's algorithm at all. The only thing, according to Inslet, that influences the Omnipod 5's amount of insulin it gives you is your target glucose and your total daily insulin. That's it. That's it. That's all they've said. Anything else you do, it doesn't make any impact. That is what they've told us, okay? <laughs> so that's a big difference there. And because the Omnipod 5 has this adaptive way of executing its algorithm, it takes a while for it to get to know how much insulin you're taking. And that can vary. So it's continually gathering the information and estimating a total daily insulin for you. So that's how the basal is working on the Omnipod 5. On the T-Slim X2, when it thinks you're going to be above 160 in 30 minutes time, it's gonna increase your basal rates. If it thinks you're going to be below 112.6, to be exact, in 30 minutes time, it's going to decrease your basal rates. And that, again, is working from the basal profile that you set up. If it thinks you are going to go below 70 in 30 minutes time, it is going to completely suspend giving you any basal or background insulin until it sees that you are going to be back in range in that 30 minute prediction time. So how about a bolus? Can either of these systems give you a bit of insulin of their own accord that is separate to or on top of the basal? For the Omnipod 5, the answer is no. It will adapt your basal, it will not give you slugs of insulin to get you down, or microboluses. The answer for the TSLM X2 is yes. It will give you one correction per hour, or microbolus, some people refer to it as. It will give you one of those per hour if it sees and predicts that you are going to go over 180 in 30 minutes time. And that correction is a 60% 
of your correction factor. So it's a conservative figure, but it is something that it does on top of just the dynamic basal rates to really get you into your target range. So say you're gonna go and do a one hour bike ride and you wanna make sure that when you're working out, you don't go low. Both of these systems have an activity profile that you can flip into that will target you to a higher glucose level so as to make sure you don't go low during your workout. That's the goal. For the Omnipod 5, that target is 150. It's all based on basal, that's not adjustable. It's 150, that's that. On the T-Slim X2, it is between 140 and 160 as a target. That's where it wants you. So if it sees that you're going to go lower than 140, the basal decreases. If it sees that you're going to go lower than 80, it totally suspends. If it sees you're gonna go higher than 160, the basal increases. If it sees that you're going to go higher than 180, you actually might get that correction dose. So those microboluses still take effect in the activity mode, but the threshold for that to kick in is much higher. There's also a sleep mode on the T-Slim X2 that will target you when you put it in sleep. So you say, I'm going to sleep for the next eight hours, or you can have it preset that it just automatically knows from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m she's in sleep mode and that's just automatically flipped into that wants to see you between 112.5 and 120. on the omnipod 5 there is no such sleep setting not at all some special features that set these two apart omnipod 5 tubeless t slim tubed omnipod 5 you can customize those glucose targets t slim x2 you can't however you can get those micro boluses and micro corrections that you cannot get on the Omnipod 5. Also, if you want to tell the system there's a change and I need you to start executing at a different level of insulin rate delivery, on the TSM X2 you can go into your basal profile and you can adjust that and then the algorithm will automatically use that to dance around. Omnipod 5, no, this is not going to happen. If your insulin needs change, it's going to take time for it to learn that. Time is in a few pods, time. Something on the Omnipod 5 that you can alter is your insulin action time. So this is to avoid you taking dose after dose after dose after dose and what's known as insulin stacking, some people call it. Stacking too much insulin when you still have insulin active in your system. So on the Omnipod 5, you can set that between, I think it's two and five hours. On the T-Slim X2, your insulin action time is locked in at five hours. And I know some people struggle with that five hour figure because they find after about three, maybe two hours, insulin in their system dissipates and is no longer really acting to help bring blood sugars down. So that is a feature that I know is locked in on the T-Slim X2 that is more customizable on the Omnipod 5. On the T-Slim X2, you can still use the extended bolus feature. So say you're having a high fat meal like a pizza. You can say, okay, I'm taking a bolus and I want 50% of that insulin now and I want the other 50% paced out over the next two hours. On the Omnipod 5, there is no extended bolus or temporary increase or decrease that you can influence the system to give you. If you want that on the Omnipod 5, you have to step out of automated mode, go into manual mode, and then you can do that. You can do extended boluses, you can do temporary basal step ups or step downs, but you cannot do it within the automated mode. One other interesting differentiating factor is the Omnipod 5 is prescribed on a prescription basis, meaning that there is no commitment, as in you don't get the pump and have a warranty. On the Omnipod 5, you just get the prescription. If you wanna stop that pump, you stop filling that prescription. Whereas on the T-Slim X2, there is understandably an initial upfront cost either by your insurance or 
however the heck your health system works. There's an upfront cost and a commitment that you are going to be on that system for four years, you'll be covered, whatever that warranty is that you're given. So there's a different commitment factor that the two carry. And actually, if you wanna try out the Omnipod 5 system, you can get a 30 day free trial through Insulet. Uh, this depends on the country you're in and everything, I'm sure, but you can get that free trial to play around with the system before you ever sign up, fill the prescription. So you can actually trial the system before deciding this is the pump I wanna go on. Whereas with the t X2, I think there is a sort of simulator app that you can download on your phone to kind of see what the interface of the insulin pump will be. But in terms of actually trying it out, unless you have a special understanding with your hospital or endocrinologist or whatever, I've never seen that there is a way to trial the system for a very short period amount of time before committing. Now, from my perspective, I think absolutely the t -Slim X2 is the superior algorithm because it's more customizable and there are more ways that you as the user can influence how the algorithm is executed. I would say it's more of a proactive system on the whole. Whereas with the Omnipod 5, it can be great, but you have to be a pretty proactive participant in the use of it. Because there are so many times where I've seen my numbers just run up really high on the Omnipod 5 and I'm like, well, I thought the algorithm was gonna take care of this, but it really doesn't. The algorithm is so conservative. It's tough because you have nothing in your power as the user, according to Insulet, to force it into a more aggressive state. Whereas on the TSM X2, you can just change to a more aggressive basal profile, say for when you're sick or you're on your period or something. And then the algorithm is going to use that as its jumping off point where it increases and decreases basal from. Whereas on the Omnipod 5, there is just no way of telling that system in any quick way that you need more insulin. The only way you're gonna get more insulin is if you give it, or if over the last three pods, you've taken a higher amount of total daily insulin, so then it starts giving you higher levels. Another thing with the Omnipod 5 is I have learned, oh my gosh, you have better be doing your pre-bolusing, which is before meals, taking your insulin, like 20, 30, whatever minutes before that meal, so that by the time the insulin is taking effect, that's when you're eating. And on the Omnipod 5, you really, really, really need to implement a pre-bolus because there's oftentimes so little insulin on board from what it's been giving you. But saying that, on the t X2, I would say probably I was getting away with more snacking and such. I was probably taking a little bit more basil than I needed and that was helping me get away with taking less insulin at meal times because I was just having a higher amount on board. Whereas with the Omnipod 5, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But from a perspective of switching from the t X2 to the Omnipod 5, I have found that a really steep learning curve because you almost have to relearn how you dose, when you dose, remember to dose way before, and remember to dose more because you simply, you can look, I'm constantly looking at the summary of what the algorithm has been giving me through the Smart Adjust and seeing, oh, well, I might be coming into this meal with it having suspended my basil for the last hour. So the minute I take a sniff of a grain of rice, I'm gonna go sky high if I don't have that pre-bolus on board. But what pump am I on right now? I'm on the Omnipod 5. So I do think the t X2 has by far the superior algorithm, the more customizable algorithm. But I am loving the tubeless aspect and I am willing to be a more aggressive participant in using an insulin pump for that tubeless aspect. But remember, this is just my perspective. 
Other people have had very different experiences and all I can speak from is my perspective. And there are some tips and tricks that I've used with the Omnipod 5 that I'll make a separate video about that uh, help me to kind of hack the system a little bit. But I don't think you should have to hack your insulin pump system. I mean, yeah, if you're looping and stuff like that, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't think you should have to like try to secretly influence the system. I think the way the T-Slim algorithm works and the way it works from your basal profiles, that just makes a lot more sense to me. I don't really like the guessing game and the playing games you have to play with the Omnipod 5 to get it to give you what you need insulin-wise. But again, just my perspective. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Hit me up, ask me. I'm an open book. I will try my best. I've tried to be as honest as possible about everything uh, and also give you the facts because I can speak from my perspective, but it's not your perspective. We all know this. We're all so individual with this condition. So take this all, feed it through your own thought process, and I wish you good luck figuring this all out, choosing an insulin pump, choosing an insulin pump system that works best for you, considering all the variety of things to consider. <laughs> and with that being said, I wish you great blood sugars, straight CGM lines, which don't really exist, but you know. Good luck finding all of your information to make the decision that's right for you on choosing an insulin pump system. But most, most, most of all, I wish you a happy, healthy, mind with it all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.